Okay, this is the electric meter. It's between the garage car entry and the back door. And uh, we come over here. These exterior receptacle outlets, they should have protective covers on them. Um, end use covers is a technical name for them, and bubble covers and that kind of thing. And then this is GFCI protected. And uh, we do not have a GFCI label on that. Coming over here. I did not want to learn this because I did not hear that go off. Okay. Be able to reset this. It's probably the bathroom, but that's okay. It is GFCI protected, so we know that. So this is our electric meter and it's been sealed. Um, this power supply conduit, the power is fed from underneath the ground and it should have a slip joint on this so that it goes up and down with the ground and the movement and those kinds of things it doesn't have a slip joint another thing is that the electric meter excuse me at the electric meter but the grounding rod is not properly buried those are eight foot rods supposed to be unless they cut them in half but they're supposed to be buried eight feet not seven foot six inches as you see you still got the brick here going up to that now the local jurisdiction with the having authority, the local code inspector, he might have been okay with that. He might have been okay with that. And, you know, we're going to have some redundancy here. <clears throat> so some of these issues that I'm about to explain might be duplicated throughout this um, complex. Uh, throughout the community. Complexes have a complex that I've been calling a complex. Now they're communities. We change, the, we change our verbiage as we get wiser. All right, so the home, the front door, essentially the front door faces south. Actually, it's southwest, but for the purpose of these reports, it faces south. So inside the garage west wall, on the west side of the garage car entry, or the east side of the back door, is where the meter is. This is where the main electric service panel is. The electric load center is the technical term for that. Some people call them burger boxes. Call it what you will. But now over here, okay. You see that labeling? Hillbilly Home Inspection? See the see the labeling there? Okay, that's handwritten. It's supposed to be printed. See where it says combination services, flush cover? Flush cover, that's clue. Uh, cutler hammer, that's printing. See where it says danger? That's printing. See this? That's handwriting. I didn't make the rules up. Okay. What the code says, that's what the cabinet manufacturer says. So I didn't make those up. All right, I didn't wake up this morning and say, you know, I think I should go over there and, you know, just kind of stir some things up, just in case I don't find anything. That's, that's not the way I operate. And what's the statistical relevance of that? I don't know, except that I can't read half of that handwriting. Okay, over here, you see this? The manufacturer expected duplicity. So if you have a problem with this one, you have this one to rely on. And as it is, we do not have dis duplicity, and it's not handwritten. I'm going to go back over here. Flush cover. See the way this cabinet is mounted inside the wall? That is not flush. The cover cannot fit flush. We have more than an eighth of an inch gap. So if something goes bad in this cabinet, it can work its way around the cabinet cover. Meaning fires and heat and that kind of thing. So since it's not the cabinet... That's a, not only is it code, but the manufacturer kind of thinks that that's a pretty good idea. Now here the cabinet was screwed in. Screws are faster. Screws are tighter. I get that. Zip, zip. Let's go to the beer store. Oh, Doug, you're so fast. I know. I'm the f fastest guy in the shop. I'm getting a raise next week. That's the way they... No, nails have much more shear strength. Now, if this community has experienced tornado or an event like that you've already got a bad day your garage is already blowed up I get that but if this cabinet had been nailed into place rather than screwed into place then maybe it would be still attached to a framing member or something there'd be some semblance of order when the you know first responders come in and they're stepping over stuff they won't have a, have a loose sparky box you know hasn't happened yet yet okay coming on in you see this term is called bundling. I have it at my house. My house is not for sale. You should not have to live like me. All right? Because this is L1 and L2. It comes in through this big knockout like that. 
And if you look through here, we have these smaller knockouts. It's because you're only supposed to have two cables at a time coming into the cabinet. You're not supposed to have them all coming in like that. Even the illustration that I have baked into the inspection report is somewhat apologetic, and I hate discounting my work. But the statistical relevance in regard to safety, the statistical relevance in regard to resale are relatively minor. The cure might be worse than the ill. So is it done right? No, it's it's not done right. Um, you know, I would never dissuade my client from seeking perfection. We have some paint inside of the cabinet and you're not supposed to have any contaminants inside of the cabinet. Now that paint. Now the bars look pretty clean. I can't see behind the breakers though. So there's no way to tell for sure. You know, that's that's actually a code code violation. And all this debris, this combustible debris in here, it's actually a code, a code violation. Let's talk about some things that... Let's move on up the food chain here. This is L1 and L2. L1 and L2 are supposed to have protective neoprene covers on them. If you don't know that's hot, you don't belong in this cabinet. I get that. Stay out. But they're supposed to have protective neoprene covers on them. This is the main neutral coming into the home. This is supposed to be wrapped. This is supposed to be wrapped with white tape. If you don't know that's the main neutral, again, you do not belong in this cabinet. Now over here, we got white hots. These are circuit breakers. This is where the energy is being fed. These are white wires that are carrying current to the appliances. All right, probably an air conditioner. This is supposed to be wrapped with black tape. If you do not know that that's a white hot, you do not belong in this cabinet. It's supposed to be wrapped with black tape. I didn't make the rules up. It's supposed to be wrapped with black tape. It's supposed to be wrapped with white tape. When coming all along over here, we're looking at our grounds. It's okay to double lug a ground. It's sort of okay to triple lug a ground. All right. I don't know what the limit is. I know four is too many. I know that three is questionable. Now over here we have neutrals. Neutrals carry current. The power comes out, usually, the power comes out the black, comes back into the white, completing the circuit, it feeds through this bus bar, which is trapped to your ground, it all goes to the home, makes the circle of life, things run, things operate, fans turn around, that's the way it works. You take one of these white wires off, your fan will quit turning around, because you broke the circuit. You broke the circle of life. So. These are expected to carry current. These only carry current during an emergency. That's why they're allowed to be double lugged. Since these carry current continuously, they should not be double lugged like that. They should not. They're expanding and contracting at different rates as each circuit carries a different kind of load. So, and then they'll become loose and they'll work their way out. And then all of a sudden your fan doesn't go around and you're calling the electrician out. So, I mean, that's the way it works. So what do we learn? It's 200 amps, copper to copper. So what do we learn? We learned that our grounding rod wasn't properly buried. We learned that we don't have a slip joint on the conduit coming into the home. We learned that we've got hand labeling on the breaker box and it was not duplicated. We learned that our breaker box does not, our breaker box cover, our electric load center, electric service panel cover does not fit flush to the cabinet. That's too wide of a gap. We learned that the cabinet was screwed into place. We learned that we have bundling. We learned that our neutral is not wrapped with white. We learned that we do not have neoprene covers on this. We learned that our neutrals are double lugged. We learned that our white hots are not wrapped with black tape. And we learned that our cabinet was screwed into place instead of being nailed into place. Nails have much more sheer strength. And it's on the instructions.